it's the authentication session. So my name is uh, Jean-Pierre Seifert from uh, TU Berlin. And uh, we have uh, the first uh, presentation from Chi Ching Luo. And it's a long title. It's called Oculog, Exploring Human Visual System for Authentication in Virtual Reality Head-Mounted Display. So welcome, uh, Luo, and thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shi Xing Luo from uh, Georgia State Univers University. Uh, thanks for having me here to present our work, Oculog, Exploring Human Visual System for Authentication in Virtual Reality Head Mountain Display. Uh, this is a joint work between Georgia State University, uh, San Diego State University, and uh, Zhejiang University, and uh, Sunny Buffalo. So uh, currently, uh, the virtual reality technology is boosting. So it is reported that uh, its market size has already reached $3.6 billion in 2018, and it's predicted to be keep growing for the next four years. And also the VR technology has been, uh, uh, yeah. And also the VR technology has been used in diverse applications. For example, in entertainment, users can purchase apps in VR app stores. <clears throat> and in medical applications, doctors can inspect uh, patients' CD scan models through VR HMD, or they can conduct uh, VR exposure therapy. And also in military applications, pilots can learn to operate uh, top secret aircrafts. But uh, to use these functions, Sensitive data is uh, accessed through the VRHMD. For example, uh, the user's uh, credit card information, or the patient's medical information, or the top secret military technology information. And uh, to uh, guarantee the user's experience and protect their privacy, we need an authentication scheme to protect our VRHMD. And uh, here are some uh, uh, state-of-the-art authentication schemes designed for VRHMD. For example, uh, typing a password uh, in a uh, virtual keyboard using the VR controller, or draw a unlock pattern on a virtual screen using the VR controller. And also there are some uh, behavioral biometric methods, such as uh, analyze the patterns of head motion detected by the accelerometer inside the HMD, or uh, analyze the patterns of uh, body motion detected by the uh, accelerometer in the VR controllers. But uh, all these uh, types of uh, methods, first, they expose the entire authentication action to the public. So uh, the uh, attacker would just uh, infer the inputted content by observing the movement trace of the controller. And also as for those uh, behavioral biometric uh, methods, uh, since the patterns of humans' behavior will change over time, so after a long time, this type of uh, authentication system will not be accurate anymore. And uh, since the, when the user is wearing a, a VRHMD, their eyes are fully covered by the HMD making them uh, highly unlikely to be observed by an attacker. So here we propose a human visual system, a HVS-based authentication scheme. So, uh, and uh, unlike the, the normal eye gaze analysis, we can collect both behavioral and physiological HVS characteristics. So this can boost the accuracy of our authentication system. But uh, to uh, uh, implement such a system is non-trivial. We face uh, several challenges. The first challenge is that uh, the first challenge is that uh, the space inside a VRHMD is uh, really limited and dark. So it is uh, quite impractical to embed a camera to sense the HVS components. And the second challenge is that uh, the current schemes of those uh, prior biometric authentication methods are inefficient. They have to train a specific classifier just to recognize one specific user. And every time a new user is set as uh, legitimate, 
the classifier need to be retrained again by the, uh, for, by the new samples from this new user. So uh, to tackle these about two challenges, we propose this uh, two-module authentication system. The first module, uh, EOG-based HBS sensing, will capture the electrical signals emitted by HVS using a technology called the electro-oculography. Uh, later on, we'll call them EOG. And uh, the second module will extract features from the, our collected EOG samples and uh, calculate the similarity between those samples. So uh, the first step of the the first step of the first module is to display a viral stimulus. The reason of this is uh, because uh, without a proper stimulation, uh, the human's HVS activities would be minimal, and some important HVS characteristics may not be shown. So here we design these uh, three types of viral stimuli. Uh, the first one, the fixed rot, this one will trigger some unique eye rotation which is determined by the user's uh, eye globe shape and size. And also it will trigger some blinks, which can show the unique features of, uh, like, which will show the like, stress and extent of the user's eyelids. And as for the second stimuli, uh, stimulus, the city street, this one could trigger the user's uh, unique scan path, and it could reveal the user's uh, unique uh, viewing habits and viewing interests. And as for the third stimulus, uh, the illusion, this one is uh, similar to the first one, to the fixed road, but this one would trigger more uh, micro circuits and trigger more blinks. So uh, after we collect the raw EOG signal, uh, the system have to, uh, has to uh, remove the various types of interferences. And as we can, as we can see in this, uh, frequency response figure, each type of noise is of a specific frequency band, so they can all be removed by filters. And then after removing the noise from the UG samples, we can now move on to the second module. So, uh, but before we authenticate the UG sample, the first step is to recognize uh, the, 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 this uh, HVS activities, including a saccade, uh, fixations and blinks. Uh, this is because uh, the circuits and fixations, these two are the basic uh, HVS activities that can show the HVS characteristics. And also the blinks can show some unique uh, uh, features of the user's eyelids. So uh, we use the uh, uh, algorithm called the continuous wavelet transform algorithm to recognize those specific activities. And this algorithm is transplanted from a prior work and is proved to be uh, good at uh, locating a segment of signals of a specific shape. And after we recognize those activities, we go back to the filtered original EOG samples and we extract uh, these uh, behavioral features and the physiological features from it. And then after we got those feature values, uh, a comparison algorithm is adopted to calculate uh, the similarity, uh, uh, the similarity like, between the features from the uh, user's input and that uh, from the owner's template. So uh, the, the result of this algorithm is a matching score ranging from zero to one, indicating the similarity between the feature values uh, of the, indicating the similarity of the feature values between the user's input samples and the owner's template. And then after, after this uh, algorithm, the comparison result between uh, two samples will be stored in one vector. And uh, after we got this uh, comparison result, we will feed this comparison result to a classifier. And uh, if, the, if the similarity between, if the, I mean, if the comparison result shows that uh, a high similarity between this user's input with the owner's template, then this user's input is uh, determined to be from the owner. And thus, the access is granted. And if the similarity is really low, then the access will be denied. 
And by using this scheme, as we can see, we do not need to, I mean, every time when a new user is set as legitimate, we do not need to retrain this classifier anymore. Uh, all we need to do is just uh, uh, collect uh, a new sample from this new user and uh, set that as the template. And uh, that's all of our system. And then we conducted a extensive set of uh, experiments to evaluate the performance of this system. So uh, the first uh, test is to evaluate the performance of our system under impersonation attack. And to do this, we recruited uh, 70 participants, and uh, each participant are, is set as the legitimate owner once, and all the participants will try to pass his authentication. And also note that uh, uh, since the, uh, the combination between the comparison algorithm and the classifier is really important. I mean, the combination can really affect the performance a lot. So it is really important to find the optimal combination uh, of the comparison algorithm and the classifier. And as shown here, uh, for example, in a fixed road stimulus, uh, we find our uh, we find the best uh, optim uh, the, the optimal combination is the is using the A/B test as the compression algorithm and use the SVM linear kernel as the classifier. And uh, for the further test uh, for each the stimulus, we will only use the, this kind of uh, optimal combination for all the further test. And uh, here is the uh, equal error rate of the system under impersonation attack. And uh, the reason why the equal error rate of the city street stimulus is, is a little bit higher than the L2 is because uh, that stimulus is the static uh, VR scenario. And uh, without the explicit uh, target to guide the user's uh, HVS activity, uh, the user's uh, HVS activity tends to be minimal, and uh, some uh, uh, some and less information is collected by the system. And after this uh, impersonation attack test, we evaluated our system's performance under statistical attack. So in this attack scenario, we assume that there is a attacker that have a knowledge of the statistical information uh, from a group of our users. And then the attacker would uh, use the uh, most probable values of each feature to generate a fake, uh, a fake forgery sample to attack our system. And so the result is uh, shown here. As we can see, uh, the impact is not, is not too obvious. And the reason of this phenomenon is that uh, uh, the, the real value, the real feature values of our real users are quite diverse, and they can just they cannot just be represented by a single most probable feature value. And we also evaluated the time efficiency of our system. So we evaluated the performance of our system using different uh, authentication duration, ranging from three seconds, five seconds, seven seconds to ten seconds. And as we can see. Uh, even when they are, when, even when we are using the shortest uh, authentication duration, which is uh, three seconds, uh, our illusion stimulus can still achieve uh, accept, acceptable accuracy. Then at that time, the equal error rate is only around six percent. So this suggests a trade-off between the convenience of this system, uh, of this system and the security of this system. And uh, we also, uh, at last, we evaluated the temporal stability of our system. So this test contains two subtests. So we recruited five participants to join these two subtests. In the first subtest, which is called the short-term test, we collected 10 samples from each of these participants, five times within one day. And the result is shown here in the left figure. And as we can see, the performance is quite stable within one day. And in the second subtest, which is called the long-term test, uh, is still the, the same five participants, but we will collect uh, samples from them once every three days, and we'll keep doing this for the next two months. And as we can show, the result is shown here on the right side of this figure, and as we can see, uh, the performance is, is still stable. I mean, the, the equal rate only increases from 
3% to 6%. And also note that uh, in this orange line here, this line shows the performance of the system when we only use uh, behavioral features. And as we can see in the long-term test, uh, the accuracy drops uh, drastically. This is because, uh, as we discussed before, the uh, patterns of a human's behavior would change across a long time. So uh, after these two months, uh, the, 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 the user would not uh, behave the exactly the same as he did like two months ago. So that's why the accuracy drops a lot. And uh, here is the conclusion of our work. We first uh, proposed a, a EOG-based authentication scheme to measure the HVS uh, components for VRHMD. And also, we designed an efficient uh, record comparison-driven authentication scheme to authenticate uh, the users. And uh, at last, we perform an extensive set of uh, experiments to validate our proposed system. And uh, thank you for listening. That's all of our work. Thank you very much for this uh, very visual talk. So, any questions? Well, no questions? Well, then, you know, I have to ask a question. So, we all know that, you know, almost all biometric systems, you know, they could be overcome in principle with, let's call it, deep fakes, right? Yeah. Uh, have you also thought about, uh, you know, to overcome your system? by you know, some video fakes or other things, or maybe training another human? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, first, uh, I want to mention that our system does not use like a does not process the, the image information. Our system collects the, the... I know, it does not process the image, but, yeah. but you, know, you could, in principle, you know, try to implant a video into your system. I mean, it's a lot of physical uh, requirements there in order to try to come with a video for your system. But in principle, it, it should be possible, right? Yeah. So have you thought about that or not? Uh, yeah, we thought about that. I mean, uh, I mean, after all, we, we found that, uh, I mean, even the attacker, uh, just assume even the attacker have all those uh, knowledges, uh, he managed to forge a, like, a really uh, uh, accurate and uh, really, uh, really accurate forgery sample that is really hard to distinguish. Uh, it is still like uh, quite a challenge for him to input this uh, forged uh, uh, samples uh, to to feed these samples into our system because uh, our system will use some uh, 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 tiny electrodes to collect the input. So. That is still a non-trivial work, and uh, uh, we assume that we could still like uh, stop this type of uh, advanced attack technology. Okay, and have you also asked yourself if you train another human uh, taking you know the the same behavior as another one? Because for instance, we we tried you know that we used machine learning to train a human to fake the real signature of another one. And that experiment, you know, using machine learning, you know, training another human, faking a signature was very successful. So, <laughs> but I assume it's much more difficult here, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. In the meantime, any questions from the audience? Oh, very good. Um, so you say uh, you're comparing the, the templates, the extracted templates, but I, in your paper I don't find how you extract the templates. Are they just the feature vectors you extract? And what mechan mechanism do you use to compare them? Is this a um, distance-based metric? or? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, the template is actually just uh, another EOG sample. So in the practical use, uh, uh, the model is like uh, the owner will, at the beginning, the owner will collect uh, a EOG sample and uh, store this sample into the system as a template. So, uh, so to compare this template between any new inputted sample, we just need to extract the features from them. And since the features is just, uh, I mean, each feature is a, is a set of values, right? So we, then we can use the, that comparison algorithm. The comparison algorithm is like uh, the input should be uh, uh, two set of uh, values. 
and then the, the algorithm will like compare the uh, distance between the values or the similarity of, uh, of the shapes, and then the, 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 this algorithm will generate like a, a matching score ranging from zero to one. So uh, let's say if there's a new user uh, trying to pass this authentication, so you need to input this new UG sample, right? And then after all this process, there is a, uh, a result, like there's a comparison result, uh, like uh, for example, all the comparison results, all the matching scores are close to one, then the system could uh, determine that, okay, this, uh, this user is really similar to the owner. So then we can know this, this user is the owner. And if the comparison result like, uh, shows all really low scores, then which means the, the, this new user is, uh, is not similar to the owner, then the system can know, okay, this user is not similar to the owner, so his success will be denied. Yeah. Thank you very much.